Here's this video. Barney saying come on in. Brought out how it's a strange how God speaks to us today. Especially for those that don't take the time to read what he gave to us using the written word of God in the Bible. Nevertheless, he still speaks whether you know it or not. To us all revealed to be the discourse of life in the marketplace. Seeing this as the movies we watch. Hear how he does this and briefly put down your popcorn and hear the voice of wisdom trying to get your attention. But here's some of the comments I got back off that video. This comes from Mary. If we pay attention, we realize the Father is constantly speaking to us. It's becoming more clear than ever. If he uses anything, he uses anything, everyone. He's always in control. You're right. Great thoughts. Will we dare to see it? That's the question. Well, here's the response. Here's the text I quoted at the tail end of this video from Proverbs, expressed in the Living Bible. Sometimes the King James slaughters it. See how it reads like headline news today. Wisdom shouts in the streets for hearing. She cries out the crowd along, along Main Street. And to the judges in their courts, <laughs> oh my God! And to everyone in all the land, you simpleton! She cries, "How long will you go on being fools? How long will you scoff at wisdom and fight the facts? Come here and listen to me. I'll pour out the spirit of wisdom. You give me spirit, quick with the mind of Christ. I'll pour out, pour out the spirit of wisdom upon you, and make you wise. I've called you so often. When?" It's all the time talking to you, you don't hear it. <clears throat> but still, you won't come. I pleaded, but all in vain. For you spurn my counsel and reproof, someday you'll be in trouble. And I'll laugh. Mock me, will you? I'll mock you. When a storm of terror surrounds you, when you are engulfed by anguish and distress, <clears throat> then I will not answer you or cry to her help. It'll be too late. Though you search for me, ever so anxiously. For you close your eyes to the facts and did not choose to reverence and trust the Lord. And you turn your back on me, spurning my advice. That is why you must eat the bitter fruit of having your own way and experience the full terrors of the pathway you have chosen. For you turned away from me to death. Your own complacency will kill you. Fools. But all who listen to me shall live in peace and safety, unafraid. It's everything I've been bringing out in these videos, the warnings. For those who haven't seen this strange movie, it's available on YouTube. Per what was it called? Uh, oh, Lord. Not the perfect song, that was that whole video. The Storm of the Century by Stephen King. Scotty. Perfect Scotty mentions this. Sends meaning missing the mark. Just stop missing the mark. I attribute sin to the conscious mind. The five senses. That's true. Stop listening to the carnal mind and listen to the subconscious and sub supercontin no no you you're not you, that's not that. It's not the subconscious mind. That's where this conscious mind stored everything. With race, cultures, secular religious creeds, and opinions of male and female. And it blocks anything that God might want to say. A whole new creation. In Freemasonry, the compass covers the square, alludes to the subconscious mind, controlling the conscious mind with a G for God at the center of both. Well, I, I didn't agree with that. I understood that you surrendered the conscious mind but also the subconscious mind, where everything you got from the conscious mind is stored into the subconscious mind. You don't want none of it. Well, Scotty, it is by an act of our free will of our conscious mind that we surrender not only our carnal senses, the five senses which you mentioned, but also this area of the subconscious mind that has stored all that we have picked up in our lives 
through these carnal senses. Things acquired totally independent from here from God. All these stored matters, blocks, are ever really hearing from our true Father. My series, The Heart and the Subconscious Mind, brings all this out. If this area isn't cleansed and the ego isn't deterred, this G that you mentioned isn't God, but it's self. In the book of James, this gets exposed. James chapter 4, verse 1. Submit yourselves. The word Greek word there is ego. Therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Hear that text again. Submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Here's yourself, you. Well, James goes on, verse 8 of that same chapter. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, those who most of their lives acted independent. That's the old Maltese word sin. I always replace it with that, this fact. So sin would be those that most of their lives acted independent from ever hearing from God. Purifying your hearts, you double-minded. Thus all these stored things in your subconscious mind weren't put there by God, but you, yourself. Put it there. And it blocks you from ever hearing this mind of Christ. I've been told to stress. Old series on that. A totally new mind, different than the conscious and subconscious storehouse. Scripture reveals this new mind. It's called the mind of Christ in you. The hope of our ever uh, getting back to God. My series on the mind of Christ brings all of this out. The Freemasons have nothing to offer. That falls short of what I'm called to share. So Scotty was gives this response. I have always wondered why we have such difficulty communicating with God. <laughs> now you know. It's your own heart. It's you. After much research and prayer I learned that we are a triad of body, soul and spirit, right? Our spirit a.k.a. the soul does communicate with God in my opinion which is ain't just as opinion the word of God and filters this back to our body through insights part of us is talking directly to God at all times yeah I agree but this information has been hard to find it gets blocked by the world of flesh and devil do you think you could do a video expanding on this uh, topic please now, everything, I, I got over 500 and some videos on here that touched all that he had asked. The heart and subconscious mind would answer every question he got there. The mind of Christ. Uh, the, the other series, uh, The First Begotten, brings all that out. Matters of Salvation brings that out. The Omnipotent of God brings all this out. Now, I find myself repeating myself a lot of times, but, I mean, you know, if somebody shows up and never viewed all these videos, God bless Scotty. Nothing against Scotty. It's there. Go, go view the videos. So I put down there, Scotty, you're correct. There is a part of us that communicates with, with God, a true father always. You see this in a misunderstood text of scriptures. It, how do you twist this poor text of 1 John? 1 John 3, 9. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remained in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Now, you can see how they would twist that text. No, oh, I never sin no more. No, you sin every day. You act independent from God in some different way. You don't even know it. Putting this into two languages, we can understand. Now, let's hear this. Hear this. Our human spirits, with the mind of our Father, are born of God. That comes out as the first begotten, which people don't, don't accept it. Our human spirits with the mind of our Father are born of God, or begotten of God, and cannot act independent from this eternal fact. Thus constantly is in communions, communications with our true Father. Now our carnal mind, born of natural parents, natural father, will follow that mind. That the flesh is the flesh, it's gonna follow the, the spirit is the spirit and it follows the mind of God. 
and the flesh will always follow the mind of its father, natural father. So somewhere along the line, you grow up, you get out of their household, and you go on with your life. Uh, our corner mind, born of a natural father, will follow that mind, which blocks this mind of our spirit. In the book of Hebrews, the following text, you see this. Hebrews 12, 9. Furthermore, we have had, have had, fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence, so we now much rather be in subjection to the father of our spirits, and live. God's the father of your spirit. If he's your father, you're eternal. Whereas the father of your flesh, this person, though the outward man is decaying, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. The outward man of self is, is decaying. Your, your natural father eventually die. You'll repeat what he did, transferring that iniquity parent to the third and fourth generation. After all, your kids will worship you like you worshiped your father. And somewhere along the line, after three or four generations, someone gets to hold the fact that God's our father, and not to call any man father. To understand this matter, father of the flesh, you have to know what this term means. Now, I have addressed this over and over in just about all that I have shared in writing and videos. This term flesh reaches beyond our idea of a skin body. It is all that we have acquired through our particular race, culture, second religious creeds, and opinions of gender, male, female, unto which we were naturally born to the parents of our flesh. This is called the indicative of parents that visit the third and fourth generation. But the Apostle Paul saying of this matter of the flesh, in me that is in my flesh, there dwells no good thing. I know you knew what he was talking about. He took Paul some 14 years away from his peers in the wilderness, sector and religious peers, to have all this undone, to even begin to hear the voice of his father and ours. Paul calls this the mind of Christ in you, placing this mind outside this corner double-minded area altogether, revealing it to be uh, to be in our human spirit, which once awakened by the Holy Spirit, whose task it is to do this, has it crying, Abba, Father. Slowly, through a process, we are weaned back to our true Father, weaning us from our natural ideas of race, culture, secular, religious creeds, which many, may not, many, may not know this, keeps them from ever gaining a whole new cre creation beyond the, even the male-female. You know, good God. The above text of 1 John 3, 9 mentions a seed. This seed is the real you. i got a whole video on that. A series. Who are we? The real you. The seed in, is it the seed that's in you. The seed is the real you that is trapped in the husk of flesh as described. Like this, it's written that this outer husk likened to what's happened to a natural seed. You go plant a seed. It must fall on the ground with this outer husk of the seed breaking in order for the seed to come alive. If that doesn't happen, this seed never grows to become what it truly was to be. Many get caught up in a natural illustration that never come to experience what these uh, words wanted us to experience. The experience appears as threatening to our ideas of who we are. It's going to be broken. It's written, he that seeks to save this life will lose it. Hear it again. If you hang on to your conscious mind and all that you, that you stored in your subconscious mind, you run the risk of losing who you truly are in your spirit's mind. This idea of your double mind will block you from ever hearing from the mind hidden in your human spirit. You see Paul praying that those that hear this mind of Christ in him, that they might gain this same mind hidden in their human spirit. Ephesians 1, 13, 17 to 18. The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit, your spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now in your human spirit, is all, it hid all the wisdom and knowledge of God through the mind of Christ that's in this spirit. They give to you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of him beyond our carnal ideas of self. 
Then verse 18, Paul goes on. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of this inheritance in the saints. We had this treasure this hidden earth and vessel. And it is to be of God, not of us. Nothing to do with your carnal mind. This understanding comes by the cleansing, the weaning of our hearts or subconscious mind from things that block all this wisdom and revelation mentioned by Paul. In this mind of your spirit is said to contain all the wisdom and knowledge of God is also called a treasure hidden in earthen vessels that excellency would be of God and not our carnal minds, conscious and subconscious. Many fall short of this thinking that this area of our subconscious mind heart is what scripture is addressing. He's not addressing that. Heed the warning about this thing of the heart. Jeremiah 17, 9-10 The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. I the Lord search the heart. I tried the reins even to, to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doing. Remember that? But I said in Proverbs you'll eat the fruits of your bitter ways. All this is spread out in many of my videos. I've already addressed it. Which one? <laughs> the answer is view them all. Or better yet Ask your father. Then wait beyond your conscious mind, and he will filter through your subconscious mind all that you, as you are willing. Any answer what you seek, found in the mind of your spirit. The waiting gives him time to clear a path to your self opinions. My series, the heart, and subconscious mind, reveals a lot of this. Here's Kathy comes along. Wow, just finished watching Stephen King's Storm of the Century. Good. I mean, <laughs> oh my God, you see how what I'm saying here comes true there. Never saw that. He saw that. He was so cunning and knows our weaknesses, right? And we all have skeletons in our closet, right? All. Oh, what a mind Stephen King had. We have a patient predator, just like Scripture says, Seeking whom he may destroy, right? The battle of the ages, the mind is the battleground. If you even if you stand alone, you got to say, you'll find out you stand alone. I do, which most likely you will be standing alone. Wisdom sure does sure, does surely cry in the marketplace, and people have no excuse. The truth is plain in plain view. It's not hidden. Uh, Maria comes along. Here's her comment. It's true. She, she's referring to wisdom as a, as a she. Sophia, wisdom. Right? And that's, that's true. It's the feminine side of God's nature, but don't get too hung up in that. There's a cult out there that gets into this thing of Sophia. It's true. She, everything. She's everywhere. Never knew this until I chose to listen to her. I never watched Stargate... SG1 until now and here I I hear her there too now, you've seen a lot of them there's Star Trek I saw a lot in there uh, the goal suppose he had manipulated many to thinking that they're, they're gods and some had woken up and realized they're not she's talking about that series of Stargate it reminds me of the true brethren who have woke up and Satan has no longer any hold on him. Also it reminds me of the fallen angels who possess great power, making others believe that they're gods, but are not. Satan supposedly does all the bad things that have happened when it's God who sends these evil spirits and angels. They have no power other than that which is given to them from above. If they only listen, if they only listen so that they could find out who or the gods of this who are the gods of this world. Okay, I got some more views here. Kathy chimes in. Hi Maria, is Isaiah speaking it is God's in Isaiah God speaks saying, I formed the light and created darkness, I made peace and created evil. I the Lord do all these things. When I first read this 
I thought God creates evil. It sure makes wisdom. It sure takes wisdom to understand this one. Yeah, it's in, uh, I think I got this coming up along with different videos. Yeah. Maria, I know that from that many frown on things like this, using movies to manifest truth. Right. That's my response to her. Yet we know that scripture clearly reveals that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. The just understand these matters. The unjust can't see it. Yet God does speak to all of us to what we avail to him. I have come to call it divine leaks. All with one day, all will one day have no excuse. God will reveal all this all the time He's spoken to them. And they'll say, When did we see you hunger and thirst? See this text beyond the usual religious idea of it. Of course God prefers to use his written word, but if you get turned off to it, there will be no excuse. Did you watch the movie? <laughs> we have been revealed this has been revealing this we have been reviewing this in many of my series on this matter of gaining the living word through the mind of Christ and us all. Now we know and hear his voice through the mind of Christ in us. But for the average man of the world, and sadly many religious individuals, think that these thoughts that they get from the time to time from the Lord are their own witty brains. <laughs> Nothing to do with us. God gets... No glory out of this. It goes to the individual. Remember, Paul the Apostle revealed, why do you, what do you have that's of any real value that you haven't received? And if you received it, how can you boast as if it hadn't, you haven't received it? Thinking it was your witty brain or carnal mind. God plants, God waters. He who plants and waters nothing is God who gives the increase. What he speaks, what he speaks brings life. Our carnal minds speaking will prove to bring only death. Of course, in many times, it takes a lifetime to realize that what you've been sharing with only you and your corner mind, and with some, having him have saying to them, I never knew you. It wasn't me speaking to you. Or having you, having your name with copyrights to things you never in a million years could have ever put into a print. Explaining your, explain your plagiarism to God someday. Makes you wonder, who is the author finisher of our so-called faith? Got a lot of good videos on that. I have addressed in one of my series. I believe it's called the Copyrights of Christ. Author finisher of what we call our faith. Find it in uh, Things to Ponder. I believe it was in it. It's in there. So Maria just chimes in again. Hi there. You, yes, exactly. She's talking to Kathy. It takes his wisdom to understand all these things. Like Job, who saw by the mind of Christ in him. See, they don't understand that. What do you mean? The mind of Christ was in, been here since the foundation of the world. It was only hidden. If the devil knew this, he would never have had Christ crucified, which was the manifestation of an eternal fact. That the mind of Christ is all and in all. By the mind of Christ in him, that Satan was consenting to do what he did. And yet Job only acknowledged God. Why? Because of the powers. The power of powers is in the Father. Amen. There's no there's no one like him. I would remind again that Satan has no power over our will power unless we give it to him. If we believe and give him more credit than our creator, then he has power over us. <laughs> That's right. It's a tricky thing that Satan does in manipulating us, but if we weren't willing to surrender our will to God's will, Satan is done for. If we would surrender our will to God's will, Satan is done for. Not my will, thy will be done. Maria, there is biblical evidence for this. That is, if you get into the spirit of the letter, not the letter, the dead letter itself. Here are a few examples using the expanded Greek text to see this. Uh, Colossians or First Corinthians eighteen. I don't know what chapter. I didn't put the chapter here. If, as in the case, anyone among you thinks himself to be wise, and well, I think it's chapter two of First Corinthians. If, as in the case, anyone among you thinks himself to be wise in the spirit of the things of this age, then he become a fool in the estimate of this age, 
in order that he may become wise to the mind of Christ. For the wisdom of this world system is foolishness as God looks at looks at. It. For it's been written and at present his own record, he catches those who are wise in their false wisdom, and again the Lord knows the reasoning of their those who are wise, that their futile reasonings wherefore let us let no one continue to be boasting in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Paulus, Cephas or Peter, whether the existing order of natural thing, material things or life or death, or present things or things about to come, all belong to you. And as for you, you belong to Christ, the mind of Christ. And Christ belongs to God. Notice that it says, all things belong to you. Here's another text. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Again, it says all things. There are many like this. There are many like this that the average religious mind won't see. A lot of texts like this, same text. It says the same thing over and over again. Maria, amen. All things belong to us. And in all things, the anointing teaches us. Like you said, what do we have we haven't received, haven't been given to? So where where lies our boasting? <laughs> There's no boasting at all. Nowhere, apart from him, we really have, we really have no, or nothing. For lack of knowledge, my people fall to their own ideas, understanding, and that is their fault. And that's why they freak out over movies that seem so worldly to them, not realizing how worldly they are themselves, nor hear wisdom through it. After all, Christ is all and in all. Would they give us something to drink? No. They shut the doors and, and hide. But when a preacher comes in his own name, not only does he get something to drink, he gets special treatment. <laughs> They're super fine apostles. In their hearts, they only have favorites and leave no room for Christ. All right, now, Maria... Amen. Satan is already, already defeated. That was the end of the comments at this point. I mean, sometimes the comments are a lot better than the video itself. I can't put everything into a video. So people that say most people can't get to the video, let alone read the comments. That's the same. This is the good wine saved for last. Coming to vessels with the mind of Christ. I no doubt that Mary, Maria, Kathy, and I'm sure there'll be others that'll show up here. And then, where I, some people don't respond, but they have the mind of Christ. They just don't respond here. Tell so, I me, mean, that's into that as far as comes up. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here doing this. I supposed to do that, so I did it. And I said, where am I going to put this at? I guess that what I do is put this with that video. That video up here. Let me get up there real quick. Yeah, born and sin, come on in. Things to ponder. So, I hope you got something out of this. God bless you.